Taiwan is one of the world's most advanced economies and has one of Asia's largest fishing fleets. Its seafood industry is worth billions of dollars a year. There are more than 1,800 Taiwanese distant water vessels operating across the world's oceans, and hundreds of other vessels are owned by Taiwanese nationals and flagged to other states. Fishing is big business in Taiwan. In recent years, disturbing footage and testimony from workers aboard Taiwanese vessels has shone a spotlight into the secretive and sometimes violent distant water fleet. Global media attention has prompted some new regulations to be introduced in Taipei, but on the front lines there remains a significant structural problem with the treatment of migrant workers. When they work on the Taiwanese vessel, there were many, many violent um, incidents where they, they treated like, um, they use the word animal, animal. And they be treated uh, on the vessel like, like, like slavery. And because, you know, in, in, on, on the sea, uh, living, working in the, in, on, on the vessel, they have no, uh, they have no choice. They, they, they have been uh, physically abused and they have to endure that kind of physically, uh, that, that these abuses until the, the ship uh, get to shore. Over the past 18 months, investigators from the Environmental Justice Foundation have interviewed numerous migrant fishermen who have worked aboard Taiwanese fishing vessels. Most of those interviewed reported either witnessing or being subjected to physical violence at the hands of senior Taiwanese crew. All were either underpaid or not paid at all for their work, repeatedly worked up to 24 hours without rest, and endured squalid living conditions aboard their fishing vessels. Desi Anwar lived in fear for his safety after witnessing his friend being beaten for not working fast enough. <laughs> kena hukuman karena pada waktu itu teman salah satu kapal pada waktu operasi di Sri Lanka dia bukan lawan cuma dia kerjanya disuruh cepat-cepat akhirnya kan dia ngelawan kena juga dipukulin sama bosnya Desi witnessed further violence when his vessel returned to port kalau saya bahasanya dia kan kurang tahu Jadi ya cuma ngelihat gerakannya dia. Yang jelas dia ditodong pistol, teman saya itu yang dipukul ditodong pistol. Dan juga pedang yang kira-kira panjangnya segini, lebar segini itu buat mukul. Cuma mukulnya itu enggak, enggak gini, diginiin. Buat ngajar aja di punggung, di mana lah. Hassan Herianto was promised extra pay for clearing debris from his vessel's propeller. Around once a week, he would dive under the boat while a compressor pumped air from the surface through a plastic tube. Sesak nafas. Kalau jalan itu sesak nafas yang memang pertama itu takut ikan hiu. Karena resikonya kan ikan hiu kalau di tengah laut. Ya berenang, berenang ke dalam kapal mencari itu apa menuju ke kipas. Rasanya takut, grogi, dan lemes badan. Karena kurang napas, karena kompresornya kan kecil. After more than six months aboard, Hassan's vessel was arrested in Thailand for flying a false flag and operating without a license or country of registration. Hassan has still not even been paid his basic salary. He continues to fight for it. Alongside reports of physical abuse and threatening behavior reported to EJF, fishermen also reported coordinated and persistent illegal fishing activities occurring on the distant water vessels on which they worked. Shark finning was reported, flags were repeatedly changed, vessels were totally unregistered, and illegal transshipments occurred regularly. Kalau kapal itu kontak ganti nama itu sudah sering, tapi di tengah laut, pas di darat, ganti nama namanya terakhir Abundan 9. 
Jadi kalau disebutin satu persatu sudah sudah nggak ingat lagi karena sering kota ganti nama. Ganti nama itu saya kurang tahu pasis kenapa diganti. Yang jelas kapal itu sering ganti-ganti nama. Kapten yang nyuruh disuruh sama bos. Dan alasannya saya kurang tahu karena ABK nggak ada yang tahu. Enggak, enggak kelihatan karena apa posisinya itu enggak 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 deket darat enggak deket darat karena apa kadang kapal kalau kita enggak 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 ngecop enggak ngecop di negara itu kena razia jadi posisinya di pertengahan yang enggak pernah ada razia enggak ada much of Taiwan's distant water fishing fleet targets migratory tuna, many species of which are endangered or even at risk of extinction. They are caught using long lines of up to 4,000 baited hooks stretched over miles of ocean. Long lining is an indiscriminate fishing method with extremely high levels of bycatch. Vulnerable species of shark, seabirds and turtles will often take long line bait and suffer a slow death at the end of a line. Taiwanese vessels account for more than a third of longline tuna vessels globally, more than any other state. Kalau yang di pokok pertama kan itu nangkap ikan tuna, tapi kalau dia dipancing kena ada ikan tuna, ada ikan marlin, ada ikan cucut kalau hiu ya, itu saya ikan tongkol, cekalang, terus lemadang, apa aja ikan yang kena dipancing itu diambil semua. Sampai kura-kura kena juga, cuman kura-kura dibuang, nggak diambil. Itu dok, ikan yang paling dicari itu ikan tuna. Nggak ada lagi. Illegal fishing and unsustainable fishing practices often go hand in hand with human rights abuses, as collapsing stocks force the cost of labor and the welfare of workers downwards. In many of the fisheries where Taiwanese fishing boats can still be found, we can see that fish stocks are declining, some are even in collapse. And what allows these boats to continue their operations is the use of bonded labour and other serious labour and human rights violations that facilitate a low-cost approach so that even when there are fewer fish, they can maintain their profits. Taiwan must confront the serious labour and human rights abuses on board its boats. It has to bring uh, Taiwanese fishing vessels in line with international standards. It needs to go out, conduct the inspections, conduct the examinations and make sure that it eradicates these abuses. Though they can be monitored by the Taiwanese authorities via satellite, many vessels do not return to port for months or even years at a time. The extended fishing period allows vessels to exploit marine resources to the maximum, while extreme isolation on the high seas means that crew are vulnerable to exploitation and abuse. In order to stay at sea as long as possible, fish is often transshipped to refrigerated motherships, which also resupply food and move crew between vessels. When they do offload to land, it is often at remote, small island ports with weak port controls where crew have little or no opportunity to raise the alarm in case of ill-treatment. The Taiwanese government agency responsible does not have the training, resources or full legal mandate required to protect the migrant crews working in such vulnerable positions. Taiwan government in 那這個是硬凹的,這也說不過去,這政府當時的態度是錯誤的,所以我們希望新政府上來以後,其實要導正那個錯誤。他们对劳动法令是完全并不熟悉的，不要讲这些检察员，包括渔业署的官员，对于这个劳动法令的呃基本概念也都是模糊的、不清楚的。
台湾这个目前对于境外聘雇的远洋渔业的外籍渔工。哦，事实上还有一大段路还要继续走，在法律面、在体制面，然后在执行面，都还有很多需要改革的地方。The fishermen EJF spoke with for this film represent a tiny fraction of the men who travel abroad to work on Taiwanese distant water fishing vessels. Much more needs to be done by the Taiwanese government and fishing industry to ensure that workers are well protected and that fish is caught legally. And sustainably.